Right now, pressing on one of our navigation links takes the user to some sample text, just saying the resort location. And that's fine for prototyping, but obviously not good enough for an actual project. We're gonna replace this whole temporary text view with a new resort view that shows a picture of the resort, plus some description text and a list of its facilities. Now, like I said earlier, the content of our JSON file, and this really matters, is mostly fictional. Like these are real places and real countries, real flags and stuff, and sort of vaguely accurate numbers, but still fictional numbers, please don't rely on them. The pictures I've given you in our asset catalog, these all come from Unsplash, which allows folks to use their pictures commercially or non-commercially with or without attribution. I have attached the photo credits for those, and these are real photo credits, uh, to the pictures here. So you can see uh, there's one here, there's another one down here and so forth. Um, so you can, if you want to, show you know, Fabrizio Conti in your layout, that'll be coming later on, um, and I'd recommend you do. The text for this place, this all comes from Wikipedia, which again can be used in real projects, but is available under a CC by share alike license, so Creative Commons. Um, go and check out more information on Wikipedia. Please do make sure you credit Wikipedia at the very least, and ideally also the photographer who did all the artwork for us here um, in your own shipping project, but again, still mostly fictional, right? Anyway, to start with, the new resort view, the real resort view, not just having the word snowbird, is gonna be pretty simple. We'll just have a, a scroll view with a VStack, an image, and some text. The only interesting part to begin with is really how we show the resort as a single text view, and you'll see a variety of ways to do that. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, find our resort view. So I'll press Command N make a new Swift UI view, and choose a resort view. Dot Swift, like that. And this thing has to be told which resort it's gonna load, so we'll do let resort be a resort, and I'll pass one in down here, so we can say our resort is resort.example, like that. And then inside here, for our uh, body of our view, there's a scroll view with a VStack alignment, alignment, I'll do leading with no spacing, because it'll go edge to edge. I have an image for our main resort image. This will just show random folks of skiing around and there's some snow, right? Not really helpful. So we'll say it's decorative using resort.id. That's where the image name matches the asset catalog. It'll be resizable and scale to fit. Then below that, I'm gonna add a group so we can add padding to everything all at once. There'll be a resort or description with padding of vertical. Then uh, we'll do text facilities, facilities, there we go, in the font of headline. Then for now, we're gonna say, I want resort the facilities dot joined, a whole array joined with comma space. And I apply a little bit of padding to that. We'll do uh, vertical, and then pad into a whole group of horizontal. Critically, for the whole uh, scroll view here, I'll say there is a navigation title of uh, resort.name, comma, resort.country, and then navigation display mode down here, oops, navigation display, there we go, of inline, so a small title at the top, because it's not a parent view, um, to get a really good preview here, um, you want to be clear that it actually has a navigation view around it, like that. Not result, resort. Resort, there we go. Boom. Hopefully that'll build correctly, and I can do a quick preview on the side over here. See how it looks. There we go, so let's zoom out a fraction. Okay, so you can see our layout. It's not too bad to get started with. Um, we can go ahead and see it for real, of course, by just upgrading Content View a little bit and saying, actually, don't just push to resort.name, push to resort view with resort of resort, resort. Not sort, not result, resort, like that. Let's press Command-R, and hopefully it'll start to come together. So I'll choose Squaw Valley or Snowbird. Boom, there we go. So you can see family, beginners, accommodation, it's all there, and then let's do Deer Valley. So same thing, great. Now at this point, there's nothing terribly interesting in our code, right? It's just fairly normal stuff. 
But that's going to change now because I want to add more details to the screen. How big the resort is, roughly how much it costs, how high it is, and how deep the snow is according to our data. And we could just put that onto a single HDAC in resort view. That restricts what we can do with it in the future. It limits our options. And so instead, we're going to group these into two mini views. One for resort information, which would be the price and the size, and one for the ski information, elevation and then snow depth. Now, of the two, the ski view is the easier to implement, so we'll start there. Press Command N, make a new SwiftUI view. This will be called Ski Details View. So again, this has to be told which resort I'm working with. So we'll just do let resort be a resort. This can be passed immediately, so I can do it correctly this time. Resort is resort.example. There we go, nailed it. Um, and this is going to have two V stacks inside for the elevation and snow, but I want them to take up more space. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place these inside a group like this. I want a group here. And the whole group will have a max frame, or a max width, sorry, of infinity. So the group will be a VStack with a text of elevation in a font of .caption.bold. There we go. Below that will be the text of, uh, let's do string interpolation, resort.elevation, M, in font title 3 There we go. After that vStack will be another vStack. We'll do text snow with font.caption bold again, and then text uh, string interpolation resort.snow depth cm font title three. It's showing two views here because we haven't told it how to actually lay this stuff out. It's a group here, which is why appearing uh, separately like that. But what matters is we're using a group, which is a transparent layout container, and applying to that the max frame infinity. So the group will have no in fact impact on the layout at all. It has no impact on the way it looks on the screen. However, it will pass that max frame infinity down to the views inside it. So the VStack uh, elevation and snow will both automatically spread out horizontally to fill the available space, if they're laid out that way. Now, as for the resort details, it's a little bit trickier because of two things. Uh, in our resort JSON here, our uh, size of resort is stored as values from one to three. So it's like small, average, and large, uh, one, two, and three. And then price is stored as one, two, and three as well, from cheap to expensive. We don't want to show price two, it makes no sense. We'll show price dollar, 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 or dollar, dollar, dollar for you know more expensive. Um, as always, it's a, a good idea to get these kinds of calculations, kind of logic, outside of your main Swift UI body, your layout. So it keeps your layouts nice and clear. So we're going to make two properties for this, one called size, one called price, and use those inside our body. Anyway, command N, a new Swift UI view called resort details view. So we've got ski details and now resort details down here. It's a bit of rearranging quickly. There we go. And there are resorts down here. Cool. Okay. So again, pass in a resort to work with. Not result, a resort. There we go. Pass in resort, resort dot example. Almost did it. Uh, and with that in place, we can say, first things first, uh, what are my displayable size and price? So we'll say our size is a string, and it'll either be small or average, or large, depending on whether they have 0, 1, or 2 for their size integer. So we can actually say, read the resort size minus 1. That index into the array, small, average, large, based on the size minus 1. So again, 1, 2, 3 becomes 0, 1, 2, small, average, or large. And that works. You could do that. But it would cause a crash if an invalid value is used, and it's a bit too uh, cryptic. For my liking, let's call it. Instead, it's just safer and clearer to do a switch on resort.size and say, if we're case one, return, uh, return even small. If we're case two, we'll return average. Every other value, return large. Simpler, safer, just better across the board. 
As the price category, this is where we have a um, number of dollar signs to work with. We can use the same repeating count initializer we used, for example, cards back in the Flashzilla project 817. Uh, so string repeating count. And like a new string, we're repeating a substring a certain number of times. So we'll say in here, there is a price property in terms of string. I'll send back string repeating the dollar sign count resort dot price times. So one dollar sign, two dollar signs, or three dollar signs, depending on that size right there. That remains in the body property, straightforward, just using those properties basically. It's another group with a V stack inside. First one will be a text of size. Uh, font of caption dot bold again. Then a text of our size string. So text just size like that in font title three. Like that. Then our second V stack will have the text of price in the font of caption dot bold again like that. And then a uh, text of our price. So again, this will be a string of dollar, 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 or dollar, dollar, dollar. So it is price in font title three, like that. And finally, of course, the same adjustment to the group's maximum width will say it's a frame here with a maximum width of infinity. So those views will just spread out horizontally to make as much space as they want. They'll just grow as much as you need to by width. Height, don't worry about it, but width, just, just fill it up. And that completes our too many views. Resort detail view and ski details view are both done and good to go. We can now put those into our resort view to display them neatly on the screen. So here's our current resort view. Um, we already have the image and the description um, somewhere around about there. I'll say actually before the description, um, for this whole group, in fact, we could put uh, the details. We could say right here, um, there's a H stack with resort. Uh, details view, resort is our resort, and then ski details view, resort is our resort, padding of vertical, and then background, I want a super light gray, um, so I'll do color.primary.opacity 0.1. So we're in light mode like this, uh, the primary color will be black, so we'll get a light gray, and that'll be on white, so just a little bit of distinction there. You know, a preview for me, perhaps, or not? It's thinking about it. Uh, and then dark mode, it'll be the other way around, so it'll it'll be a black background, but a white primary color, but mostly transparent. So hopefully now, uh, I'll give that a quick run. It should work quite nicely. Let's find out. Have you got to think? Build canceled. Come on. Did I make a comedy typo? No, it just didn't do the build. Cool. <laughs> so again, let's choose Deer Valley. And there we go. So it is, it is correct. Just Xcode isn't being terribly helpful right now, but they'll spread out. You'll see they'll take up more space because they have a nice flexible frame width like that. Now we're gonna add some more to this in a moment, but first I wanna make one small little tweak down here to the text. We're using joined with a separator of comma space and it creates this kind of thing. Facilities, family, cross country and beginners. That works okay. You know, it, it, it works okay converting a, a string array to a single string, but we're not here to write okay code, we're here to write great code, the best code we can, the time we have. And previously I showed you the format parameter of text use as a way of displaying numbers in various formats, like currency, for example. But there's a format for string arrays too. This is very similar to using joined with a separator, but rather than sending back a comma b comma c, it'll send back a comma b, and C. That's more natural, I think. So rather than saying resort facilities join separate, da, 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 we'll say resort facilities directly, just give it the array, and then say with the format of dot list type dot and. And this and is here because you can also say dot or. So I want A, comma B or C, for example, or and C, depending on which kind of list you want. We'll use and here. Anyway. It's a tiny change, a tiny change. I think it's a very nice one. So when I choose uh, score value now, I'm gonna see family, beginners, and accommodation, which is much more natural English. 